Now, politicians usually never miss an opportunity to parade their love of football. But when it comes to supporting England in the early stages of Euro 2012, well, they've drawn the line. All England's first round group matches will be played in Ukraine, and ministers say they'll boycott the games because of the treatment of the jailed opposition leader, Yulia Tymoshenko. Well, our sports reporter, Kami Zerum, is in Krakow in Poland, where the England team has its base. Well, Kami, tell us more. As you say, Cathy, the big news from the European Championships is that the British government have decided that they're not going to send any ministers, any delegation, any contingent uh, to watch uh, the England games that are being held uh, in Ukraine as a protest about concerns mounting human rights abuses there and uh, political interference. Now, standard practice would be for the government to send a minister. Probably it would have been the sports minister, Hugh Robertson, to at least one of England's games. And it had been uh, talked about behind closed doors in private that that might have been the game against Ukraine, their third group game, uh, which is uh, scheduled for uh, two weeks' time. But now that's uh, not going to happen, largely because of mounting international concern led by Germany that for any European government to send uh, official representatives to Ukraine would somehow dignify it, lend it credence when it appears to be going backwards in terms of transparency and trust and human rights. So the UK today decided to uh, uh, lend its weight to uh, that growing roster of international critics. Through crowds and cameras, Team England strode and, we were told, in a good mood. They're based in Poland, but playing across the border in Ukraine, where things are not quite so happy. The UK government has decided to boycott England's games there in a protest at the former Soviet Republic's worsening political situation. The FA said it was a political decision entirely. Their mission was to win games. The Foreign Office confirmed this afternoon that no ministers will be attending group games at Euro 2012, citing widespread concerns about selective justice and the rule of law in Ukraine. There are serious problems, of course, in Ukraine. I think everyone is uh, well familiar uh, with those problems. Uh, so I hope for our team it's a great sporting event. Uh, but of course, it's, uh, we don't want people to understand that as giving political support to some things that have been happening in, in Ukraine that we don't agree with. Pressure has been mounting on Ukraine to free former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko, who was recently jailed for seven years on abuse of office charges. Critics say the allegations are trumped up and proof of Kiev's increasingly authoritarian streak. Tymoshenko is in a secure hospital on hunger strike, having been allegedly assaulted by prison guards earlier this year. Her daughter blames the Ukrainian government. They don't want to, to see my mother be treated. They don't want to see my mother get better. The European Championships were meant to help Ukraine illustrate its modern credentials. But democracy is a word many here don't recognize. And today's developments add the UK's voice to the international condemnation. Germany, the Czech Republic and the president of the European Commission are all boycotting Euro games hosted in the Ukraine. Kiev derided the UK's decision to watch their boys from afar as emotional, the implication being that sport and politics shouldn't mix. The football, of course, will go on, but Ukraine is clearly rattled. And I gather the England team have had another setback in the build-up to the tournament, Kami. They have some rather sad news, in fact. Uh, we woke up to uh, discover that the father of uh, Jermaine Defoe uh, the England striker has passed away, uh, so he has travelled back uh, to the UK, obviously, to be with his family. Now, we had a press conference today with uh, two England players, uh, jo uh, Joe Hart and Stuart Downing, and obviously they said that the whole team was uh, thinking about uh, Jermaine and that they hoped that uh, you know, he would uh, overcome uh, that setback. It's quite interesting when you get a chance to speak to the players and you get a, a glimpse of their mindset and the discussions that they're having behind uh, the scenes. And, Joe Hart was, was uh, um, very personable when describing uh, one of the events that they've got lined up for uh, tomorrow. Uh, a number of England players are going to go and visit uh, the... Um, uh, a number of England players are going to go and visit Auschwitz uh, tomorrow morning and also Oskar Schindler's uh, factory. And he described it in very sensitive terms, said that it wasn't something that he was looking forward to, but he felt that it was something that was really important 
that teams that are coming to Poland uh, get a chance to understand the history and, and what happens here. So off the pitch, there's quite a lot of stuff happening. On the pitch, the focus very much is on training. They went to the training pitch this morning and said it, the facilities were great and they're, of course, planning for the first game on Monday. Kami in Krakow, thank you. Chris.